Okay, so we're given an equation. This is a degree 3 equation, and we're not supposed to be able to solve these sort of equations yet, and we don't have to. Instead, this is really about checking. We are given three values for x, negative 4, negative 2, and 6, and we have to figure out about each one of them whether they are a solution of this equation or not. So this is really six problems. Evaluate the left-hand side of this equation with x equals negative 4. That's one. Evaluate the right-hand side of this equation with negative 4. Compare. If the two sides are equal, negative 4 is a solution. If they aren't, then negative 4 isn't a solution. Then rinse and repeat. Substitute negative 2 into the left-hand side. Substitute negative 2 into the right-hand side. Are they equal or not? If they are equal, negative 2 is a solution. If they're not, then negative 2 isn't a solution. And then repeat the whole thing with 6. So this is really the type of problem that's just evaluating algebraic expressions, but it is on steroids. So let's see first with x equals negative 4. So if x equals negative 4, then the left-hand side becomes... Well, first we're going to replace the expression with an identical expression, only we replace the variable with pairs of cute little parentheses. And now we're going to copy the value of the variable into the parentheses. If we're substituting a negative value, all of these parentheses are necessary. Now we reduce the problem to an order of operations problem. Okay, there are two exponentiation. We're going to do those left to right. Negative 4 to the third power is negative 64. Now for the second exponentiation. People are tempted to cancel out these two minuses, but that would be incorrect because this one here is really two of them because of the squaring. So altogether there are three negative signs. But what I would recommend is first, this is subtraction. So we're not doing that yet. We're at the level of exponentiation. So what we are subtracting is negative 4 squared, which is plus 16. Left to right, now there is a multiplication. So this is subtract. What are we subtracting? Whatever 27 times negative 4 is. That is negative 108. And now all we are left with is addition subtraction. They're equally strong, so we're just going to go left to right. Negative 64 minus 16 is negative 80. To subtract is to add the opposite. So that means that negative 80 minus negative 108 is negative 80 plus positive 108. And that's just 108 minus 80. That is 28. And so finally, the last addition will give us 30. So we computed a whole lot. What did we get? We got that in this equation, when x is negative 4, the left-hand side is 30. Now we have to do the same thing to the right-hand side. So we're going to substitute negative 4 into x squared minus 3x plus 2. So we replace the variable with pairs of cute little parentheses, and then we're going to copy the value of the variable in there. And now this is just an order of operations problem. You do not have to go step by step, but I will. The first step is the exponentiation. Negative 4 squared is 16. By the way, I just want to make one comment here. Some people are having trouble with these two. It would be incorrect to write this when someone asks you to square negative 4. So when you're not sure which one to write, and then not when you're not sure what's going on, just go back to the meaning. We're asked to square the number. Which number? Negative 4. So that's negative 4 times negative 4. That's plus 16. So that's kind of shortcutting this little danger spot in notation. So negative 4 squared is 16. Now we have a multiplication. So this says subtract. And what are we subtracting? 3 times negative 4. That's negative 12. And now we go left to right. First the subtraction, because it comes first. To subtract is to add the opposite. So 16 minus negative 12 is the same as 16 plus 12. If you want, you can do that on the margin. 16 minus negative 12 is the same as 16 plus 12. And that's 28. And 28 plus 2 is 30. So what did we get? We got that... If x is negative 4, then the left-hand side of this equation and the right-hand side of this equation are both 30. That means that x equals negative 4 is a solution of this equation. Okay. 
So now we have to repeat the whole thing with x equals negative 2. So we're going to compute the left-hand side, we're going to compute the right-hand side and compare. So let's do that. So if x is negative 2, first we're going to copy the expression and we're going to replace the variable by cute little pairs of parentheses. And then we're going to copy the value of the variable in there. And now we have to solve the ensuing order of operations problem. So there are two exponentiations. We're going to go left to right. Negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. Now for the second exponentiation, this minus is just carrying the subtraction. And what are we subtract? Well, what is the square of negative 2? Negative 2 squared is plus 4, but we're still subtracting it. So now we have one multiplication. Again, the first minus is just carrying the, the operation, which is a subtraction, and what we're going to subtract is 27 times negative 2, which is negative 54. And now we're, we're left with only addition subtractions. We, we're going to go left to right. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. To subtract is to add the opposite. So negative 12 minus negative 54 is the same as negative 12 plus 54. So that is 42. And 42 plus 2 is 44. So if x equals negative 2, then the left-hand side of this equation will have the value of 44. Now we're going to evaluate the right-hand side of the same equation using x equals negative 2. If x equals negative 2, then the right-hand side, which was x squared minus 3x plus 2, so first we, we replace the variable with those cute little parentheses, and then we're going to copy the value of the unknown in there. And now we reduce the problem to an order of operations problem. So the first operation is the exponentiation. Negative 2 squared is 4. Then there is a multiplication. From 4, we're going to subtract 3 times negative 2. That's negative 6. 4 minus negative 6. To subtract is to add the opposite. So 4 plus 6 is 10. And so the right-hand side is 12. So what did we get? Given this equation, when we substituted x equals negative 2 into both sides, we got that the left-hand side was 44, the right-hand side was 12, which means that negative 2 is not a solution of the equation. Okay, let's evaluate both left-hand side and right-hand side using the value of 6 for x. When we replace the expression with an identical expression only, Instead of the variable, we draw these cute little parentheses. If the number we're substituting is negative, those parentheses are essential. If the number we're substituting is positive, none of them will be necessary. But we should still understand what the operations means. So the exponentiations left to right. 6 to the third power is 216. 6 squared is 36. 27 times 6 is 162. So now left to write 216 minus 36 is 180. 180 minus 162 is 18. And 18 plus 2 is 20. So if x equals 6, the left-hand side of this equation is 20. Let's see the right-hand side. So the right-hand side is x squared minus 3x plus 2. So when we substitute we're going to get 6 squared minus 3 times 6 plus 2. So first the exponentiation, 6 squared is 36. Then the multiplication. And now we have subtraction and addition. We go left to right. First the subtraction, 36 minus 18 is 18. And 18 plus 2 is 20. So what did we get? We got that in case of this equation, if x is 6, then both the left-hand side and the right-hand side are 20. And so x equals 6 is a solution of this equation. Given these three numbers, two out of the three are solutions, and the third one isn't. Thank you for watching.